All right, I think this is the third video on this. Maybe north, I don't remember. So this was our 12. You go all the way back to the first video and see where I came in on this vehicle and what I found in second vehicle and the leaks and the procedures I went through. And so we just went from R12 to 134. Now, this is a rag top and it's a black rag top, uh, soft top, whatever you want to call this. And there's no insulation in here. This thing is hot. And when I get inside there, I literally can feel the radiant heat hitting my head and the side of my face and my shoulders and the tops of my arms. This thing is so hot. Um, now, I do so many vehicles. I just realized, and I started realizing this lately, but today it just really clicked. I do so few old vehicles that still have fixed piston compressors. When the guys talk about revving up the engine and changing, uh, you know, for better efficiency and taking pressures and stuff like that. On variable displacement compressors, they just change their displacement when they're at idle to make them work better. Where on a fixed piston, you have to manually up the idle on a fixed piston compressor like this. So we're at 30 PSI on the low side. And I don't have my high side hooked up because it's one of those little quarter inch, no, less than quarter inch, five sixteenths threaded adapter. And it's really hard to get in there. And I don't need it anyway. I just need to know the temperature once I have it 100% full. So we have 46 degrees. Let's see if I can get this to show. We have 46 degrees coming out of the dash. We got 78 degrees going down inside. Remember, this is converted over from R12 to R134. So now I'm going to rev up the engine. So remember, we're at 30 psi at idle. Let's uh, watch the pressure as I rev it up a little bit. Shit, I can't even see it. I got so much glare coming back in my glasses and in my face. The sun is directly in my eyes. I don't see nothing. There we go. So that's the low side pressure. Dropping, dropping. So now on a fixed speed compressor, this actually makes a difference. On a variable displacement compressor, you're shit out of luck, dude. So we got 42, 41 degrees coming out of the dash. 42 degrees. So that's our dash temperature. With the engine idle up. Now, if you put a big fan in front of the car, blowing air over the condenser. That would help a little bit on the high side. That's our low side pressure. So it looks like we're sitting at 42 degrees. And since this one has a slightly leaky uh, rubber hose, high side discharge, and just do both hoses at the same time. The shaft seal has a slow leak in it. This was scheduled to come back and have the gather the parts, order them. They'll be sitting in the shop and he'll come in for us to do the work. And uh, then we'll recharge it up again. But right now, this will get the customer some working air conditioning. We didn't waste R12 in this vehicle because it would be a total waste to put R12 back into a vehicle like this. And uh, he'll go out. And remember, this was the vehicle that left the dirty debris right there. That was from this vehicle. Literally, littering, littering, uh, litter, littering <laughs> my inside of my manifold. And um, because it was ran low on refrigerant, Lack of oil return, lack of cooling the compressor, customer destroys AC compressor. And that's it. All right, guys, I'll see you on the next one. This is a go. And he's sitting here idling at 44 degrees, even with all this glass on this little black rag top and uh, with R134 conversion. And I'll see you guys later.
That's our final. Uh, right there. Yeah, I think you could live with that R134 conversion. And then when they update the condenser, don't get the factory condenser. Look for an updated condenser from a later year or a different manufacturer that has micro channel or the smaller tube and fin, the little six millimeter with like the 16 or 18 tube per inch. And that'll be a great upgrade to the condenser for better cooling.